Hey, Shoshana. Hello again. <clears throat> Hello. I cooked dinner while uh, we had that little break. That was good. That was quick. I have guests, so I had prepped the stuff beforehand. So, yeah. Okay, there's participants. Well, we'll get started pretty soon. Wait for a couple more people. Bennett, you'll take notes again? Sure. Great, thanks.
All right, um, we'll get started. I think Sarah will be here soon, but Shoshana, are you here? Yes. Great, okay. Well, welcome to another monthly meeting of the Shade Tree Committee. Dorothy, thanks for joining us again. Um, let's start off with a few business things and we'll jump into that. Um, Julian, do you have the agenda? If you could share your screen, I'll make you a... Yeah, sure. Um, sometimes it shows up quite strange, but I will give it a try. Oh, I can't make you another host, so. Alan, can you do that? Sure. Yes. I, I'll, I'll just that there. Okay. Over there, over there. I, I don't know about you guys. I have the agenda up, but I prefer not to have it fill the screen because then I can't see you guys. <laughs> I would rather have okay. like so, this, but it's up to everybody. It's my that's problem. perfectly fine with me. All right. Dorothy, do you need the agenda at all? Uh, no, actually, I, I, I glanced at it uh, in the notice and I'll, I'll just follow along. That's fine. So, um, I'll just keep popping into it to see what's on the agenda for myself. And then I will. So the first thing is um, any announcements or public comments? Dorothy, you could talk now or you could talk later. Well, right. Um, I don't have too much to say, but I did um, send in a letter. Um, actually, I did forward it on to Bennett, but I didn't forward it to you. And I, I, I've been kind of very rushed trying to catch up with myself this week. And just clearing the papers off my desk and find I found out I didn't do a couple of things I should have done. So it's been crowded. But I sent an email to Paul uh and with but also to Xiao Mangano and to Andy Steinberg. Um and I, I, just to ask, get it clarified, because you when you'd wanted to have a dedicated budget line, and I want to know when that comes in in the process of putting together the town budget. Uh let them know that I totally supported such a budget line. Um, and I wanted to know about the timing and the process. And um, I then got back a uh, email from Sean um, saying, um, we have expanded a recurring line item in the preliminary capital improvement program to include tree planting. The line previously called tree removal is now called tree planting and removal. It has $20,000 proposed for FY24 at this moment. This plan will come to the council on May 1st. And then in an answer that I don't have right in front of me right now, um, I suggested that the line be increased because I didn't know what it was before, okay? But I said, you still have the word removal in there. Um, so we, it might need to be bigger. So that's basically what I did. So I don't know whether that was, I mean, obviously you guys have done a good job because they had already put this in or had were planning on it. But I believe you were asking for 40,000 or, yeah. So I don't know whether that can happen or not, um, but um, anyway, it's, it's, it's some kind of a move forward. Um, and I guess that the question is, what, do we, what should we do now um, to follow through? Good question. Um... Well, thank you for doing that. And I did, Bennett sent me the info, so I'm um, up to speed on that. Uh, I, I also, I, I, I did do that. And I appreciated that suddenly there was a flurry on Monday morning, there was a flurry of emails about this topic, um, which I greatly appreciated. I didn't respond because I wasn't sure yet how we as a committee should mm -hmm. respond. So I um, wanted to let Henry know that. Uh, my, my question is kind of the same as yours, Dorothy. You kind of got there faster than I think I was going to get there but the what it and maybe it's a it feels like it's maybe an Allen question like it, it, with removal being in there 
could that just eat a lot that whole line item alive on its own or is it give us some sense of like how useful this is or isn't so the word I'm confused about is the word expanded um so what was the line for tree removal before so the the tree removal has come and gone it's you know it's it's been in there and there are years when it's not funded and there are years when it's funded um and it's it's been 20,000 it's been 40,000 um um so i mean my interpretation of that is it's great that i can use those funds for tree planting as well as tree removal um yeah. and it would be up to me to determine you know how much money we would need to spend on hiring a contractor to do tree removal so you know the mary maple removal was paid was done by a contractor um so mm -hmm. there are situations around town where it just makes more sense right because of equipment that the contractor can do it much faster and we get a lot of other things done so um i you know have been wanting to increase the tree removal um kind of line item so that we could go more into maybe some bigger contractor projects where you can get a contractor in to like you know do all of one street so you come in and, and prune and, and do things all on one street at a time and you can start chipping away at backlog of, of maintenance not just removals um, right right so um you know it's a good thing that they're talking about it and, and that they're thinking about tree planting as well as tree removal so yeah, but but the the issue is then to try to get this increased. I I'm, I'm sure there's there's random money floating around now, so I can see getting more money on a one time basis is a lot easier than getting it to a dedicated line. Right. Getting so. capital budgets tend to be easier than getting operating budgets, even if it's reoccurring capital. I think last year the budget for tree removal was 40,000, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and uh, basically what I'm wondering is say it's 40,000 again this year and it's made to be planting and removal, will all of that end up being spent on removal because that's the true cost of tree removal or will some of it, end up being able to be spent on planting or is our removals just too expensive for that and we should instead ask for 60,000 for plantings and removal or whatever. So if I could respond to that. The, so it would be up to me to say, you know, I want, you know, X number of dollars for planting, you know, this year. Um, and I would hold that money aside for planting out of that line item and use the rest for removals. Um, mm -hmm. So it would, you know, it would be money for all of the tree plantings that we want to do on Second Saturday, plus whatever other tree planting needs we have around, um, you know, like the North North Amherst Common project or something. So. But what I'm concerned about is that you've talked a lot, I think, about Norway maples, and that we have a lot of them, and um, I see tree removal as being a big item in the future. I mean. Don't you? Well, I mean, we have a lot of things going on. We have, you know, emerald ash borer in town. We have, we now have the beech leaf disease in town. Um, you know, sugar maples, maples are just having a hard time right now because of drought. So our removals are going to pick up because our age class of the trees of our tree canopy is also pretty old because we had such a long period of not planting trees. So we have an uneven age class in town. Um, uh, so I, I don't see, you know, removals reducing um, to answer your question, so. Right. So would you, go ahead, Henry. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think I trust you, Alan, as tree warden to set aside money for tree planting and everything and encouraging tree planting, you know, in the future though, beyond you, uh, you know, I, I would like to see it as a separate line item, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be best for us. And then we were clear what, where we stand, you know, year after year. And I mean, I don't want to see Alan put in a position where, or any tree warden in the future, where 
basically they have to choose between allocating this money for planting and allocating this money for removals. I mean, you would basically like if say a lot of sugar maples are a safety threat and need to come down one year, then we don't get a whole lot of planting um, or the other way around. So I guess I just worry that regardless of how skilled and really amazing Alan is at his job, we might as a town be forced into a situation where we have to dedicate all of that money to removals one year. I, I would also um, like to work towards having them be separate line items in the budget. I think because removals tend to be labor, um, the you know companies that do big removals have the equipment and I'm sure they carry costs for that, but really what we're paying for as a town is the labor of the removal. And with tree planting, we do the planting ourselves. So there really isn't a labor cost, it's just materials. And those rates are going to change differently. So if we have the two line items as separate uh, in the town budget, we'll be able to adjust for changes in cost of those things independently of each other. Um, you know, we might not see huge increases in plant material from year to year uh, because, and we're doing a lot of volunteer labor, whereas there might be labor, you know, jumps and spikes in labor or vice versa. Um, so I think ultimately moving towards separating them is a good move um, as we move forward as a town because we're not sure how things are going to change in the future. So in terms of moving forward, I think, are we all in agreement that we want it to be a separate line item? Yeah. Okay. So in terms of moving forward, what do we need to do? Do we need to approach the whole town council together? Are you going to continue to um, push this through with town council, Dorothy, or? Well, I certainly, I certainly will, but I think it's uh, more effective to have uh, some people from the committee doing it. Um, and then I could, you know, definitely, I mean, everybody's for trees, okay? There's, I don't think anyone's going to say I'm not for planting trees, but they're going to say we have such calls upon us. I mean, right now we're in a season of discontent. Uh, we're getting letters talking about the condition of the roads, um, people fussing about this, the sidewalk thing, uh, about street lighting, um, the cost of the, we're coming up to the school vote. So it's a very kind of delicate time right now. Um, people are, some people are getting worried about the cost of the library. So, you know, we've got all this stuff. The feeling is that we're just money, money, money. And then we're gonna try to be told to be reasonable. And, you know, uh, at some point when it comes down to planting trees, I don't think you can be reasonable. Um, it has to be done. Uh, and they, we have to keep doing it to renew it. Um, so uh, we, we, I think we need your committee um, uh, and, and of course, Alan, I mean, to, to, to speak about it um, and make a passionate case. Um, but I definitely will do whatever I can on the town council and just let me know what you want me to do and how you want me to do it. But there's just an awful lot going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess I would say like some of our town departments in some capital requests might not consider this, but like we really try to do our tree plantings in the most cost effective way possible. We use the labor of volunteers. We get our trees from Amherst Nursery. Sometimes they're voluntarily given as a donation from Hadley Garden Center or Amherst College. Um, so we really do aim to make our tree plantings as cost effective mm -hmm. as absolutely possible. And yeah. I would, I don't think that is true of all the capital requests that come in to the mm -hmm. council. And it would be worth highlighting that if that question is asked. But it's it's also that you, the, because you do it that way, um, I mean, this relates to one of our fights that we're having right now about public comment. Um, and the legal, just getting out of the emotional things, the legal women voters comment is that public comment is a way for people to have buy-in into the town decisions and to feel that they're part of it. And by your using volunteer labor and getting trees from local people, you are creating something where people feel very close to the government and that, it's, that they, they should be feeling very involved. This is good stuff. This is the way we should be going. And it's, you know, well, the kind of thing that we need. So 
Um, the, the, uh, the, but right now, everybody's telling you that we need to put our money somewhere else. That's what they're telling. It's just, just have to stand very firm on this as to why this is an essential thing to do with Amherst and not to do it would be very destructive of Amherst, its history and its ideas, I guess. Yeah, and we have, I mean, the other thing is it builds community. It builds community for the neighborhood. We had the homeowners or tenants association involved at the boulders um, in mm -hmm. a tree planting there. It really does build community. And it also, like someone's, people might only have negative experience with experiences with town government until they meet Alan or one of his crew mm -hmm. members um, right. and get a tree in their front yard. Yes, it does. I, I remember you planted, uh, there was somebody on Lincoln, Upper Lincoln that got two trees, um, maybe three. And she was just over the top, over the top, because there was a huge lawn that had been, been somehow trees had been killed or died or something like that. And it was feeling very desolate. Um, and that was just in the last year and a half, I think. Or well, maybe it was before COVID. It's all a blur. Time is all a blur. But Etheridge, I don't know if you remember Etheridge, um, and she was so happy about that. So it made a, a lot of difference. Um, well, I'll write a letter to the Gazette. Um, I think would be a good thing. Yeah. Um, I can probably get that done pretty soon. Um, do you know, did you find out when the deadline is, when they're going to have to make a decision about this? Uh, so it's going to come to the council on May 1st. Okay. Um, the, the chances of the council voting to increase it on their own is small. Only, things only will happen like that if there is a big, big letter writing thing. And we're getting a lot of, as I say, negative, unhappy letters. So if these could be happy, positive letters, uh, it, it would stand out from some of what's going on. I mean, but we're, there's a lot of communicating going on in town right now about what's going on. Um, so... So could the committee organize to write letters um, in like a day or two in advance of that council meeting and have any anyone interested send them in? Uh, I think not a day or two. Um, as soon okay. as possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's May 1st. It. So there's time before May 1st. Um, okay. So, um, you know, middle of April on, I guess. And it's spring. I mean, you know, it's a great time to try to get money for tree planting, come to think of it. Um, um, e even today, uh, at this morning when the snow first fell, I looked at one of my dogwood trees and it was absolutely beautiful in the snow. Um, and then it began thinking about, you know, spring and trees and whatever. And so it's a, it's a great time to, to get people excited and happy uh, about it and not to be negative about tree removal, but we know that um, branches fall, and they fall on people and on cars and whatever. Um, and, you know, the, but the tree, we have to have good housekeeping. Just, you know, you can't keep removing without adding and that kind of stuff. But you guys would know how to write the letters and to tell your friends how to write the letters. And that could I'll, I'll write a letter. I think, Bennett, if in the next newsletter, which will come out the beginning of April, if you have maybe even lead off with, you know, we're trying to do this town line, line item, budget line item, and the, encourage people to write to, Paul to the town council, things like that. I can write a letter in mid-April, that time frame. Yeah. Great. And Bennett, didn't you write a letter already to the Gazette a while back? Don't do you have a format we could all kind of follow or somewhere in my very organized files? I do because I did do that. <laughs> so I do feel I, like you, I, you drafted something a while back. Oh, it got in the paper. Um yeah. and so um I, what I'm thinking is we should probably just have a special issue of the newsletter go out that's about one thing and it's about that um, okay. and that only. So that's my thought uh, to get people's attention. Um, my experience about letter writing campaigns is that everybody needs to have the facts, but every letter should be different. And your letter should reflect some personal story you have, personal feeling you have in connection to a tree, some trees, Amherst trees or whatever. Um, so that... Um, it's not because we get when we get the letters and it's like a formula, you, you, it doesn't have the same effect. It just doesn't have one. I think that's an excellent advice. I just want to read <laughs> Bennett's original letter so that I've got some of the language and things in my head. But yes, I agree. Do you think a letter writing event would be attended? Do you think 
like we'd have success in getting people to like actually go like maybe to the library one day if we you know had pie or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> interesting idea i don't know if people would come it may be I mean, that pie is involved certainly some people would show up <laughs> I just have pie on my mind because there's a pie. I can tell you this is a pie led strategy. <laughs> today, there's something about today being. It is pie day. It's yes, 3 14. <laughs> so um, I'm not discouraging us from doing a letter writing pie eating uh, event, but maybe we couple it with um, some of the events we do at the uh, first Arbor Month. You know, we'll have a we'll have a booth at the sustainability fair, and we'll be doing some other events. And if we have some sort of um, thing, we can pass out with the facts and ask people to write letters. Then, oh yeah, 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 at our booth at the uh, yeah. at the farm market thing. Yeah, uh, when we're giving away the trees. Yeah. yeah. Do you maybe think we have, like some sort of thing that actually has like you know like um. An address to send it to so it's just like all they need to do is like write a little personal note and then send it in or maybe write something right there and we collect it right there like you know that mailbox thing was very successful maybe if we you know had something similar <laughs> like you remember the mailbox thing with the uh the berry maple yeah. well um Bennett, if you can find the letter you wrote, and then Ellen, if you could write up a, a cheat sheet that we can give out to people based on that saying, please write a letter, here are the facts, you know, make it personal. Okay. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. Um, and we can decide later whether we want them to go out uh, individually or all as one packet. And, and should we include all the town counselors' um, email addresses? and Paul Bachelman's email address on that so people know where to send it? There's, there's a way to do just to town council that'll go to everybody. Okay. But by my, my question is, just to be sure what your, um, the overall message, number one is, we, I guess we're supposed to be thankful that there is a dedicated line because you did not have a dedicated line. Is that correct? Yes. That it was just we whatever. Do, we okay. have to do but a dedicated Jason line. For that. Um, then are you including the request that it be increased or um, or maybe uh, you're going to have a meeting and decide what your official position is? I think so, but I think we're leaning toward we want it to be a separate dedicated line item separate from the tree removal line. Okay. And then whatever they put in is already an increase because we don't have that at all right now. So, um, right. You know, our target is 40,000, but whatever. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense, people? All right, good. Well, thank you so much for coming to the meeting and uh, you're welcome to continue with us. Uh, well, thank you. if I'm not needed, it is my birthday today. So I'm gonna- uh, Happy, get, birthday. Happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. Go have go some have pie. pie. Go have right some pie, birthday. you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. Okay, so bye-bye, nice seeing you. Thank you, we wish you many more years. <laughs> Okay. So nice to have her join us and yeah. advocate for us. So let me just, uh, all right, so let me collect hours. Um, I did about eight, Bennett. Um, I would say five. Includes this meeting and the other two meetings. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, and, oh, for the other two meetings. So sure, give me, give me eight. Okay, Ellen? Um, since our last meeting, I would yeah. say uh, four. four. Four, okay. Julian? Uh, probably six or seven. Okay. Shoshana? One. One? Uh, including this meeting? I think so, yeah. Okay. Like, because I haven't done yeah. anything. <laughs> and Sarah? She's honest. Two. Okay. All right, good. Um, 
And can we approve the February minutes? Did you have some changes to them, Henry, or it all looked good? I, think I made some cosmetic changes. Okay. Um, yeah, you did, I believe. I looked over them. Yeah. And but mostly I just um, highlighted some things in red and uh, adjusted the, um, the list of who was there. I keep visitors separate from the people that are on the committee. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I did anything else. So all in favor of approving the minutes, thumbs up. <laughs> okay, minutes approved, good. And next on the agenda is the chair's report. Um, I got a check for $25 <laughs> from uh, Nia and Andrew Kennard. Um, so I got to put that into the gift tree fund. Alan, how do I do that? Uh, you can send it to me at DPW, and we will enter it in through DPW into the gift fund. Okay. Does anyone on the committee need to do anything? Oh, and then, um, Sarah, are you still the treasurer? Yes. Can you send a, um, I'll send you the address. You send, do you have the cards, the thank you cards? No, no. Oh, Shoshana, do you have them? I? I still have them, I guess. Um, I thought I gave them to somebody, but I don't know. I'll check and like, if I have them, I'll, I'll uh, fill one out. Okay. Um, why don't you check and let me know? I might have them here. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll get, I'll make sure someone has a card and someone will write the letter. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, that was nice to see you. A little donation came in the mail. Surprise. Um, what else? Oh, um, I've been requested by Amber from the town, Amber Taylor, to shrink the agenda. So I'm not putting as many details in it anymore. So you might notice there are fewer details, but um, it's still all there. We can talk about everything. I just can't put as much on the, on the agenda. It doesn't fit. Um, and that's about it. It's great that... Um, that she showed up. We've got some other business to do, so I'll keep my report short and move on to Julian. Do you have a assistant chair's report? Uh, no, I just wanted to mention that there is a uh, tree wardens and foresters brunch uh, meeting this Thursday, I believe. Um, dinner. 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 Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you. That I will be attending, um, and anyone from the committee is welcome. To attend as well, I believe. Great. Mm -hmm. Alan, Tree Warden's report. Oh, I can just add to Julian's that the if you've been following Acorn to Arabella, which is a, a, a small group in Granby that is building a wooden boat from scratch uh, using a lot of local timber, um, they're going to be presenting at that uh, dinner meeting. And then the second presentation is uh, going to be about the new wood heat. So using its new high efficiency kind of wood stove heating boilers for um, mostly using wood chips. So for your municipality or private company or even a house and you want to heat your house with um, sustainable wood chips, then um, this technology is pretty cool. And there's a lot of state incentives to do it too. So. And then the um, Mass Forestry Alliance is also going to be presenting. It's a group that um, works with landowners who own forest lands and um, foresters and wood producers to, um, you know, promote sustainable local forestry practices. So it should be an interesting meeting. Um, so there is going to be a sidewalk project on Belchtown Road. It's going to go from roughly the corner by um, Cumberland Farms down towards um, Stanley Street. Uh, there, you know, this is we're talking a year or two out, but um, they want to continue the sidewalk on both sides. Um, and fix some road issues there. So um, we should have some 
information to follow on that. But we're in the early design phase and we're already talking about trees and preserving trees. And that's gonna be another tight one because the right away there is very narrow. There are actually a lot of public shade trees on that section of Belchtown Road, um, but we'll see. There are or aren't? There are not. There's, there's um, <clears throat> literally a handful of trees that will be impacted um, by this. So okay. again, we're a year or more out from doing anything. Okay. Um, uh, and then we can talk about, but we need to talk about Arbor Day. Uh, also, we need the vote and the form for the seedling money to be released to purchase the seedlings that we voted on, committee voted on um, at the last meeting. So um, I guess Sarah and Henry if you can coordinate that so that I can get that paperwork. All right, Sarah, do you have forms? Well, I've got a form here. Yeah. I'll fill it out and sign it and send it on to you. Okay. I'll leave the amounts blank for you, Ellen. Okay. I think you, yeah. It's, it should Where? be in the meeting minutes too, or did we did we do a, a, an amount or? We approved it last month, right? We, yeah, I think there was an amount in the meeting. Okay. I can check the minutes and fill that in, Henry. Okay, yeah, send me the exact amount. To... And do you know how much they cost, Alan? Uh, there were two different. We were doing the uh, tulip poplar and pawpaw. They're different amounts, but they're both around. It was like two hundred something a piece, you know, for a hundred each. Um, so I think it was close to five hundred for the. Well, I have to put the exact amount unless I leave it blank. Yeah, for you. it's in. Well, it's in the minutes because I gave you the price okay. in the, right. at the meeting. So whatever we, whatever you voted on at the last meeting. And who's the vendor? Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters Association. Okay. Right. All right, I'll do that. And that's all I have really as far as Tree Wardens update. It's four four hundred and fifty is what is stated in the minutes. That's how much we approved up to. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then um, does that cover it, Ellen, or is it more than that? I think that should cover it. I, I don't think the price has changed. So. Okay. Um, treasurer. I have no update. Okay. <laughs> Social media and website. I put those as committee reports also. Shoshana and Julian. I don't have any update. Um, I put the um, the site visit on there, and there was um, a neighbor that it seems was alerted, like in a butter that was alerted by that particular post, which was surprising to me. Initially, they were angry that they were finding out through us, but you know, I guess it. It's better that they found out at all rather than not find out at all, you know? Yeah, he was a little upset at first, but then he calmed down and uh, he came to the, the site visit and was quite mollified. He, was, he approved of the plan, so. The tree was posted. So there's literally a poster on the tree. Um, I know it was facing away from his house that was facing toward the street, which is fine. So he just didn't notice it yet. But he was like, you know, why is the tree committee, you know, hiding all this information at first when I talked to him? I was like, I calmed him down pretty good. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Walk through the front yard, I guess. Yeah. I'm um, oh, sorry, I just blanked out. Where were we? Oh. Social media and. Right. Okay. Um, Bennett, any changes to the uh, website? No. Okay, well, that's an easy report. Um, I just lost my agenda. All right, so next we move to Mary Maple's The Love Letter exhibit, and I have to go get my cord to plug in my computer, so I'll be right back. Well, you can talk about it. We still have people taking Mary Maple wood, so uh, 
Um, one of the folks has uh, showed me some pictures of the bowl that he is turning out of the Merry Maple um, and hopes to uh, give one to the committee. That's very uh, cool. I think I've mentioned this before, but um, it might be nice to do an exhibit of the objects people make out of it, including, and then we could have so, some of the letters as well. Um, but I seem to recall that Britt said that we didn't get a ton of letters. So I don't know if it could be, I don't know if there are enough letters to be an exhibit on its own, but mm -hmm. certainly we could do a call for um, all oh, the kind of things people do. I'm sorry, Susanna. I, I did. Ha I heard that we did get a lot of letters. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm misremembering. <laughs> Wouldn't be unusual. But so it, we have to wait for Britt really on that. But I think, yeah, um, I think that's a great idea. Um, I'll send her an email saying, hey, can you request people to, you know, would they be willing to exhibit their pieces in a, at a public showing? Yeah. yeah so Alan, um, I was away for a while. How can I um, still get a chunk of the Merry Maple or anyone else that might be watching? Yeah, um, so they can reach out to me um, if they want a piece. Um, I can't remember if we have some left over that were already cut. Um, did Brit, Brit has, say she had some left over? Brit still has some, yeah. Yeah, uh, she may have a couple of the big pieces left over too. Um, but if, you know, I can more than happy to meet you down there. It's pretty much what we've been doing. A lot of the requests that are coming in now are people who want specific sizes, you know, because they're trying to build a table or they're trying to turn, you know, a board, a bowl or something out of it. Um, and I just meet them down there with a chainsaw and we quickly cut a couple of pieces that they can use. Um, so great. I'm okay. happy to do that. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, good. Um, Arbor Month plans, that's the big one, and the Sustainability Festival. We need to have our table look good. We still have those signs that Bennett designed, um, which are great. That got a lot of attention last time. We'll have the tree seedlings, and then we'll need to come up with a schedule um, we can probably put that off for this month, but some point soon we'll need to schedule when each person can be there, who can set up. I'll try to get the, um, the tent and things like that, the canopy. So I was, um, the town council did reach out, I think it was to Henry and I, um, maybe mm -hmm. it wasn't. Um, you know, what we wanted to have in the proclamation, it was a proclamation going to change or anything like that. We do need to, um, you know, finalize that. We just want to keep it kind of generic. We don't want to give them too much details because we don't have everything finalized yet. Um, I have been talking with Amherst College. They tentatively have agreed to host a presentation, a speaker. Um, a lot of kind of good ideas have come out of that. So we might have. Uh, somebody from the Amherst History Museum, give a short, very brief discussion of the sycamore tree that we're trying to work on and preserve. Um, someone from the committee could in theory even talk briefly. And then the main speaker would get up and give his presentation on um, the, the difference between like mature, you know, heritage trees, large sniffing trees and what they're, why they are so different from, um, trees that are younger um, how they how they survive uh, in the world so it's a pretty cool presentation um, that's what he's going to be talking about that's what he's going to be talking about yeah mm -hmm. um, so we need a date for that really yes so the date I, I haven't heard back from Amherst College yet but it's going to be their venue so somewhere around Amherst College one of their lecture halls or something um, so I really need to get the date nailed down um, yeah. And make sure that it's something that the, the speaker can actually make. <laughs> so he's he works out of um, uh, New Hampshire, um, out of the U.S. Forest Service office up in New Hampshire. So. 
yeah, so let's let's try to get that. And then um oh the library book reading too. That was the other part of it. So Arbor Month was do a kids uh book reading at the, the Jones. Um so that has again tentatively their Jones is on board with that, but again, we don't have dates and things like that. So it, really down the wire here and nailing it this all down and trying to get it with some kind of uh, document so that we can advertise it. Okay. And do you have any idea when the work on the tree will start? So I, the deadline for companies to submit bids uh, are, is the 17th of this month. Um, and so I would hope to have this work start in April. Um, mm -hmm. on the tree because we could plant the other tree but we probably should wait till that work is done yeah it'd probably be easier um yeah. I'm, i would like to have the work done in early early to mid april um so we could do a tree planting kind of like maybe we could do an arbor day tree planting so that would be friday uh before the sustainability festival or something like that um, that'd be good um, yeah, and we can do the mulching and some of the other tasks we said we would do on the, for the tree that day too, for the big tree. All right, um, what day is Arbor Day? This is, I have it somewhere, I think. Last Friday of April. It's the 20, oh, Earth Day is the 28th. No, Arbor Day is probably, Earth Day is the 22nd. Um, Earth Day is the 22nd, Arbor Day is the 28th, okay. Yeah. Actually, yeah, 22nd Earth Day, yeah. Get that mixed there. Okay. So um, I think I'm free on the 28th. Uh, that's a Friday, you said? Yes. Okay. Anyone else available to do something would be what time of the day or? I'll have to wait till it gets closer to find out for sure. Okay. Alan, what time might it be? Well, we could pick a time, I guess. Yeah, pick a time. Yeah. Five o'clock. Do it like if we did it, you know, in the evening, or if we did it like after lunch, or um, you know, either one's fine for me. How should I describe this in the notes? What's the language? I don't know what the. Uh, we're, well, we're discussing Arbor Month activities. Um, and currently we're discussing the Amherst History Museum um, Heritage Tree Grant, which called for us to have some work done on the tree, to plant a new tree, um, and to do some public education and outreach around the importance of uh, big trees. Okay, thank you, that's great. So we'll plan it to be on Arbor Day on April 28th. Okay, so um, we could, if it's going to be like on the grounds of the History Museum, I'm just thinking um, Teen Lounge starts at three. Maybe we could like integrate it with the Teen Lounge mm -hmm. at the library. Great. That's a great idea. Yeah. I think that's an amazing idea. Yeah. Good. I would have to um, talk to the Teen Lounge people before I commit them to that idea, but. Okay. But um, I have the feeling that that would go over pretty good. <laughs> so that'd be like maybe four o'clock or something following their thing or? Um, I would say like as team, like as like a teen lounge activity. So probably like at three, cause like that's when teen lounge starts is at three. Okay, great. Sound good? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. School gets out at 335. So I would almost want to give kids some time to get there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just know that Arwen does teen, like she runs Teen Lounge. Um, oh, awesome. <laughs> great. So Arwen will be there for this thing if it if this happens. Um, yeah. And she there at three. So I, okay, so I guess 335 then? Yeah, just because that's when most kids get out of school. They get out at 335? Yeah. So we say 345? 
Yeah, that that's probably about right. That's about when most folks make it to town. Okay. Yeah. And then I don't know how to combine that with the, uh, the kids reading thing, but. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the same day. We can do that another day. Um, right. Good. Yeah. So we have um, the second Saturday planting in April, which. Um, uh, let me look at the list again. So that would be the fifth, uh, the the eighth, April eighth. We have the Sustainability Festival on the twenty second, and then the Arbor Day at the Amherst System Museum on the twenty eighth. Yeah. And on April fifth, you have the UMass class thing, right, Alan? That was the fifth, you said. Yeah, that's what I have written down. Around eleven o'clock. Forest and Ag program. Yeah, so th is that enough info for you for the Arbor Day proclamation? What, um, were you looking to do a tree walk in April or is that gonna be in May, Mother's well, Day? We talked about Mother's Day. I probably won't be able to do it on Mother's Day. So um, we could move that into April. Oh, it's getting to be a busy month. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um, more fun with the leaves on the trees, maybe like mix it up. Because like last year it was without, right? Like they were just starting to come out or something. Uh, I don't I don't remember. Well, if somebody else wants to lead it, I may not be available in May. Um, So I think we'll have to table that for now if we don't want to do it in April. I mean, I'm not doing it in April myself, um, but like, but yeah, it does seem like there's a lot of stuff going on in April all of a sudden for us. Let's, let's put it off. Uh, maybe we'll do it. You know, maybe a fall one would be nice. We talked about that too. I'd love to do it every season, you know, but. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, a fall one sounds really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so let's, let's put off the uh, tree walk until um, fall. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea because, like, New England's known for its uh, foliage. You know, we might even get like people from like well out of town that you know come visit for the foliage. Sure. Yeah, I think that's a really cool, cool idea. Great. Um. All right. So, do you want us to say, Alan? Do you want us to say anything? You want us to create something for the proclamation or are you just going to use the standard language? Yeah, I think we use the standard language and then I need to plug in the dates of the things that are happening. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're set on that, yes? We have the second Saturday tree planting. We have the um, Sustainability Festival on the 22nd. We have the 28th Arbor Day tree planting. Um, At the History Museum at the History Museum. And then whatever you want to say about April 5th. Yeah, I don't know if we need to include that okay. necessarily, but um, I'll think about it. And then we got to come up with the date for the actual presentation, which is dependent upon um, Amherst College. Right. So, okay, that's great. Good. All right, Sustainability Festival we talked about a little bit. Uh, do we need to talk about it more now? Is there anything else we need to prepare ahead of time? Now, is there actually going to be a sustainability festival to, this year? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm um, going to walk silts at it, and we're going to have a booth at it. Yeah, I started just writing up some information about uh, care and planting of the pawpaw Great. saplings and the tulip poplar. So I'm hoping to get it way down. <laughs> it's <the> very <laughs> basics, but... Um, I'd love to have that available when you hand out the, okay. the seedlings. Great. I have to go, um, but I'll read the rest of the, the notes to catch up on what I miss. Okay. Is there anything you need to add on any of the agenda items or? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Thanks, Sarah. Good luck. Take care, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye bye. All right, so town tree tour, we did individual tree requests. That's still on the agenda. 
I would still love for us to come up with a system where we can just take charge of planting those trees. Um, I don't know if we have the time today to discuss that more, but keep that on, keep that on the back burner and let's, let's talk about that more. Okay. Um, UMass interns that we need Brit for that. Tree nursery is another thing we've talked about, but uh, do people want to talk about that more today? Uh, I will just throw in, you know, DCR it does have grants, you know, if the, we can find a location, preferably it would be one that, you know, is on town land, but it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, there is funding available to pay for some infrastructure to buy the, the liners that you plant in a nursery to work on watering systems, you know, so it'd be a 50-50 a matching grant. Um, we have to come up with money to pay for everything at first and then match the amount with in-kind service. Um, so you could definitely make a nursery happen very, you know, economically. It's then the maintenance and care to keep that those trees alive and to make sure they get dug at a at the right age so they don't get too big. Right. Which is all often what happens with nurseries is the trees get too big. Yeah. So we, we've got a really a three year, three, four year commitment to, to this project. Yeah. Um, but some um, we're probably not going to start it this year. So why don't we why don't we try to shoot for fall discussing it and really get it on the agenda and and decide to start next spring. So if we want, so I'll just add that if if we want to do it, and we you know, so if we start discussing it this fall, the deadline is in November for the grants. So um, we would need to know, you know, in October, essentially, if we're going to try to get a grant okay. to do a tree nursery. If you want to do something in the spring. Um, so. Deadline is in November? Yes. Good. Uh, all right, so that's everything from the presentations discussions. We have the old ongoing items, the town tree inventory. Any word on that? No update on that. Okay. Stockbridge School, that's again Brit. Uh, History Museum we talked about, the library trees. Um, we'll see if the library gets built, but uh, there I is did a have a site visit, Henry. I can give you an update on that. Um, okay. Yeah. So I did see a copy of the plans and I met with the uh, landscape consultant that's working on it. And we did a walk around and identified trees and on the plan and trees that were going to be removed. Um, so as as designed, you know, um, the, the big oak in the back goes, um, and some other um, smaller trees around go, of course. Um, so there is going to be some tree impact. They don't really talk. There's not much yet on new tree plantings, but we are trying to get trees planted out front as well. So. The trees we put in a few years ago along the street are doing well. It's nice. Um, yeah, but that oak is a big tree. That's a big loss. Yeah, the, the elm tree that we planted early on in our project, uh, way, way back, um, which is now a nice kind of small, medium sized tree, uh, we'd have, we'll have to go, it will have to be cut down. If they design the front sidewalk the way they are proposing to do it, I did throw out an idea to move the sidewalk away from the tree so it wouldn't have to be removed. But um, Where is the elm? So if you're standing in the road looking at the Jones, um, on the left side of the building front is a Princeton elm that we planted um, back in 2009, somewhere around there. Um, back before I was a full-time employee with the town. Um, 
And uh, it's a nice tree. It got hammered by the October 2011 snowstorm, a lot of damage to it, but it was, came back with a vengeance. Um, and uh, it may be impacted. All right, yeah, if we can save that tree, it'd be good. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on this? Statewide initiatives, um, there's nothing new on that, I don't think. Um, significant tree ordinance, I don't think anything is new on that. Anything new on the solar bylaw group? Julian, I filled out the solar survey. Everyone- Yes, I did as well. If everyone has the ability to, you should go onto the town website and fill out the solar survey that they've made for most people in the community to take. Any, um, any committee members, members of the public, town staff, everyone is welcome to fill it out. Um, and I would encourage you to do that. Other than that, I do not have any updates on this end. Okay. Can you send the link to that survey to the group? Yes, I can. I will get it right now. Thank you. Has everybody on the committee seen the most recent um, notice that went out regarding the consultant they're doing to solar for solar mapping in town? And um, there's some public meetings they're going to have um, at the Jones for people to talk and discuss and to do some kind of game about solar uh, and it's on the town website now. There is a, this past Monday, there was a Zoom meeting, which is probably recorded or will be available Friday. Um, there was a presentation given about what the solar mapping is all about and how the town's gonna use it. Um, and they want, again, they want people's input. Um, all right. Can you send uh, send me the link? I'll send it out to everyone. Yeah, I can send you the notice. I, I, the only reason I know about it is because I got one of those auto automatic news mm -hmm. events emails. So. Oh, here's the form. This is the response form to the... Uh, yes, yeah. that's correct. So everyone can copy that down. Yeah, everyone check the chat. It's there. I can also send an email after this meeting if you guys want. Yeah, because uh, Britt and Sarah yeah. wouldn't get it on the chat. So great. Yeah. Is, right. this, uh, is this the same one that you sent like a while ago? Because I think I, I have a vague memory of actually doing it already. No, it's pretty new, I believe. Oh, it wasn't sent like earlier this month or something? Or it might have been. Why don't you... uh, I didn't send it, but it may. Let me check my email. Why don't you click on and see if you, you'll see pretty quick if you've filled it out before, I think. Yeah. If you fill it out twice, that's not a terrible thing. <laughs> nope, I didn't get any emails on it. Um, okay. okay. I wonder if maybe I got it in another way. I'll, I'll see if it'll let me do it again. It's possible. I've gotten a few emails about it from non-committee related sources. All right. Um, anything else on this? No. Uh, I have one other item since the last thing on the agenda is topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair. And that's the birch trees in front of the town hall that are slated to be taken down. And uh, they're not public shade trees, so we don't have jurisdiction over them. But I did talk with Alan about my concerns. Um, and Alan said that they're, they're not well. So I'll let Alan talk a little bit about it. So, um Part of the design for the common actually crosses the street and goes into the front of town hall. So there's a new plaza area being built and improved sidewalk and a bike bike racks and things like that. And it's gonna cut into the hill. There's a little grassy knoll uh, in front of town hall. Um, and there's a, a birch tree there that is, um, you know, medium, medium sized tree, pretty, you know, it's been there there was another clump there, I think, before that was taken away a long time ago. Um, but one of the leaves of that tree snapped out one of the trunks. Um, it was a clump birch. And uh, I've been watching the two remaining leaders for some time now. And there's, you know, there is decay that's getting into, you know, where that 
first trunk failed um, and at some point you know, in the not too distant future, I'll have to make a call and that's gonna get removed. Um, Henry did make a good point that, you know, you, with birch, if you cut down, you know, all the, the stems, it'll sucker out and make a new tree, you know, uh, from water sprouts. So there's that. Uh, so we propose currently to take the tree out and plant new trees uh, in the location or in a new tree at least. Um, and we're working on some species selection for that location. Um, but there wouldn't be a public shade tree hearing because it's not in the public way as Mass General Law Chapter 87 um, defines it. So it's just on town property. Um, Is it possible to let it sucker out again um, instead of planting a new tree or putting one yard? Yeah, it's possible. We're gonna have to cut the roots pretty good on the tree to, to cut the banking to do the, the plaza sidewalk bike rack area. Um, so that's that's why it's being proposed to be removed was because of the root damage to it. Okay, thanks. I'm happy to meet if you know if you want to meet as a group or if you want to meet individually, or if you just want to go look at the tree. Um, you know, if you walk around the back side of the tree, you'll see where the third trunk was, um, and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. I guess. Okay, great. I appreciate it. Do we want to do a site visit there? I don't feel a need the way Alan's described it, but uh, no, I understand it pretty well. I don't feel like I need it either. Okay. Anyone else? I agree. Okay. I agree. All right. So that's all I have. Anyone have anything to add? No. Okay. Um, Alan, I'm glad you guys took down that tree on pot wine. <laughs> tree. Oh my God. I drive under it two times a day. <laughs> did you see tough. the did you see the logs in the parking lot? Yeah. Over? Yeah. I had, I mean, I knew I had a feeling there might be some decay in the trunk. Oh, it was unbelievable. Um, oh, really? It was, it had about three inches of holing wood on a 30 inch diameter trunk. And it went 40 feet up into the, it was hollow like 40 feet up into the trunk of the tree it was impressive wow. Uh, wow. It just goes to show you how strong a cylinder is um, right as far as uh, engineering uh, that thing was cool. a 30 degree angle though it was just it, just waiting it, to fall right onto the yeah. road it had been growing at an angle for a long time and then okay. we had this we had a storm one of those big windstorms we had this past year um actually did start to lift the root plate on the back side of the tree. You see it um, starting to lift. So um, yeah, I'll miss it. It was fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> sort of scary to drive under though. Yeah. <laughs> Let's drive fast, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. Good to see All you. Right. Uh, All right. Thanks everybody. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks. Can you give me the minute as soon as you can? Good. Sure.